Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show. And I've got a guest that's over in the warmer part of town. I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And this gentleman's from Los Angeles, California. His name is Caesar, and the last name is Espino. How you doing there, Caesar? I'm doing good, Brett. How are you? I am well. So it's warm weather down there, right? You know what? It's definitely better than, than where you're at. You know, it's definitely a lot, a lot <laughs> warmer. Yet for me, it's getting colder because it's that time of the year. I know I lived down there for a couple of years, and that the, the wind comes in from the coast, and it's yeah. cold to the bone, as they say. It, it, it gets pretty cold at night, for sure. Oh, and it's a different kind of cold. Here, it's just like the, <laughs> more the external, and there, it's kind of internal. <laughs> yeah, 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 it is, it is. How long have you lived out there? All my life, uh, since okay. I came here from, the, from Mexico, so now 30, uh, 30 years, man. Wow. wow. Yeah, yeah. In the same area, pretty much? Pretty much, yeah. Same same neighborhood for the most part. Not too far. Yeah, I spent a couple of years out there uh, part-time in Covina, Glendora, and then a little bit in North Hollywood, Studio City, and then I had to come home. Yeah. It's yeah. a different place out there. <laughs> it, it, it is, it is. I stay close to uh, downtown LA by the Coliseum, USC. Um, mm -hmm. So it's kind of that area. But you know what? They're, they're doing a lot of great things, out of, you know, from uh, just the school and just everything. They're building a lot of things. Yeah, California is a cool place. I mean, it, it, things start happening out there and they don't get to us for another two years or so. Uh, yeah, that's how it is. We're still using fax machines. Uh, <laughs> what, is what is that? What is that? Just kidding. <laughs> so let's kind of get it. You, you married and got kids and all that kind of thing? You just, I, uh, I am single. I, have, uh, I do have a daughter, though. Um, but she's pretty, uh, pretty young, 24. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you're kind of married to your business. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So married to so my is. business, yes. Yeah, I I didn't get married until I was fifty three years old. Wow, that's then awesome. I got married, and she's got her business, and I got mine, and they're totally different. She's a coach, and I'm more of a marketer, and mm. kind of keep our own little things separate. And but yeah. uh, it's it is you gotta be an entrepreneur. You need to be in it. You gotta. You, you do. You do. It's not an easy uh, route uh, yet. Definitely uh, for me, at least it's not for everybody. It's, it's rewarding, right? I mean, you have all your ups and downs. Uh, I count more of my ups than my downs because that's what really makes more uh, sense for me. Well, I have a saying and it's, you can't fail if you don't quit. So as right. long as you keep on going forward and you fail forward, you know, even if you fall forward, yeah. if, you, if you fall down, as long as you fall forward, you've made progress. So. Yeah, definitely. Now you're involved. You're an author, and you're also a real estate investor. I am. Yeah, I am. I have a total of uh, six books. Uh, my last book was a best international seller uh, in multiple uh, uh, countries. I'm working on another book that's going to be uh, released, uh, hopefully in about, in about a month and a half or so. Um, it's uh, it's actually a series uh, that I created called "You Can Overcome Anything," uh, and that's the book series. So we're going to be coming up with uh, the second uh, uh, book uh, in um, towards December, middle of December. Uh, and then I am a full-time real estate investor uh, doing either wholesaling and or buying, fixing, and flipping properties. Uh, and then um, I also do uh, mind coaching, uh, accountability coaching through uh, neuro-linguistic programming practices. Mm -hmm. That's some powerful stuff. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. Um, you know, the, the brain kind of works in like logic, you know, right. the, the emotional and the, and, the, and the logical element of stuff. And it's, uh, you can kind of change paths and guide someone through. And right. um, like I, I mentioned, my wife is a coach and it's, it's important to have someone like yourself that can point things out because it's that stuff in the subconscious mind that kind of directs us and you don't know. I, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, I came from sort of an alcoholic family. So when mom and dad would go to the bar, they'd, they'd bring me back a nut goody candy bar. And that was my, my reward <laughs> yeah. for, being, for being abandoned. Yeah. yeah. And I, I went through a uh, breath work session with a guy. If you're familiar with breath work, it's yeah, puts you into a, yep. sort of a relaxed state. And I woke up from the, situ the, from the session craving chocolate like crazy. And I couldn't figure out what it was. And it was those nut goody candy bars. So that brought up that mm, stuff from my yeah. subconscious. And it was just, just, you know, those chemicals in my system. So NLP yeah. is a very, very powerful thing. And then if it's used with a, with a coach that understands, right. you know, because we can get lost in our own stuff. We don't even know where we're going. 
and someone has to look from the outside looking in and go, have you thought about it this way? And all of a sudden you get that, oh my God, yeah. I never thought about that. Very cool. Yeah, definitely. So are, are your books all on real estate or are they on mindset or Actually, a little mix? None of them are on real estate. I, I think I do oh. need to come up with a real estate book uh, in uh, 2021. They're all, uh, I would say they're in more in the uh, self-development, self-improvement arena. Um, and so my very first book is You Can Overcome Anything, uh, uh, Even When the World Says No. And that's more of a memoir of, of my life, my journey, where I really talk to the, the reader about who I am and all of the different things that I had to do uh, throughout my journey to become who I am now and how you might be able to take some of those principles and ideas to empower your own life or inspire you to make changes in your own life, right? Um, I do have a, another a series of books where uh, it's how to become an entrepreneur and what is the life of an entrepreneur, right? So looking at that from that point of view, if you want to step into becoming an entrepreneur, you can uh, get some ideas from, from that book. It was me and, and a friend of mine that we co-author this book or the series of books, and it's all about entrepreneurship. Uh, and then the other ones is just really more in the self-development uh, mm -hmm. arena. Well, that's an, an, another interesting and I think very important part about entrepreneurship and the real estate industry because it's a lot different than like, uh, like if you've got a restaurant, you go and a customer comes in with money and you give them food. It's a quick yeah. transaction. Right. Whereas real estate is more like real life. You know, you plant the seed, like a farmer plants the seed. It may be a few months before you get a little stock of corn and it may be a few more months before there's actually corn there. So yeah. real estate, the mindset, is it takes a little bit of time. And that's what's kind of nice to work with that because things just don't pop into existence. Right. And, uh, you can, you well, can kind of guide people through that. Yeah, and you have a good point too. I mean, when you, when you think about that, right? And it's really in any, any kind of business when you're an entrepreneur. Uh, I can teach you on how to do the steps or I can give you the logic. I can give you all of these different things, right? For you to be able to take a concept and apply to possibly what could be your business. The challenge you're going to have, though, is that if your mind is not in the uh, right state of mind to be able to receive that, it doesn't matter what I tell you or what I give you. It doesn't matter the tools I give you. You're not going to be able to succeed right. because if your mind is not ready for that, that no or that failure, although it's a lesson, uh, if it's not ready to take on that, you're going to end up not making it, right? And so you have to have uh, the ability to say mentally, right, that I'm going to be able to uh, go through this and it is part of the process to fall forward it is part of the process to get that no yet i gotta be able to pick up and figure out what might have gone wrong and then readjust and do it again right and so that's one of the critical parts i think with entrepreneurship uh in general well uh, again sort of using the farmer and the corn analogy that like if someone doesn't realize that it takes some time they might plant the seed and then they go out there the next day and they dig it up because they don't see a, a corn stalk. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. they put it back in and then they go out and the next day they come up and they dig it up again and because right. they don't see a corn stalk. So they just don't know that they're making the mistake of killing the process. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, exactly. Very cool. And then to, to take someone like yourself to be able to coach them through and say, just be patient. Right, right. It's, exactly. A lot of it is like what I do on the internet. Sometimes you do these posts you're not going to get response. Just let it go. Like when we do these videos, they go up there and maybe it might be a week and there'll only be like 17 views on it. And then all of a sudden something will happen and the right people will type in the right keywords. And then all of a sudden there's a lot of views and some comments and some inquiries. Mm -hmm. Got to be exactly. patient. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about real estate because that real estate's always intrigued me because I look at it as ever since we were in the cave, we walked out and it rained, we walked back in the cave. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have some shelter over your head. So I think real estate is a very interesting thing to be in. But as an investor, you have a lot of knowledge in that. Like I'm invested in REITs, mm. real estate investment trusts, because I don't need to know yeah. anything about the real estate. Right. I just put the money in it and it does its thing. Right. But when you're doing a real estate investment, you need to understand that if this thing's got a bad roof, you need to factor that in. Otherwise, there goes your profit, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's, uh, um, there's so many things that you, you can do. And, and I actually have a real estate program too that I teach people uh, that have never uh, tapped into real estate and they want to get into real estate investing uh, from the bottom, right? Um, and a lot of the students that I have in the past have been students that wanted to just tap into it. They never done any transactions. So 
one of the things that I tell people is, you know, there's two things you can do, right, to, to get started with a real estate. Number one, you can do your traditional wholesale, right? You're, you're pretty much taking a property and you're, uh, you're kind of like the middle person and you're, you go out and find the seller and you go out and buy, find a, another investor who's going to be the buyer and you kind of marry them together, right? Yeah. That's the, the overall idea of a wholesale. Then the other one is you actually become the end buyer who's going to end up flipping that property. So you go out and buy, find the seller, you acquire the property, and now you're going to uh, hold on to that property to actually fix it and flip it. And obviously, you can get more complicated if you want to get into buying, holding, and other, other things of that nature. Right. I, I mostly focus on the first two principles. The biggest thing, though, is, is, is there's a lot to, to be looked at between that, right? You have to understand um, many different aspects. Number one, you have to understand the property, you know, its condition. What can you sell it for, whether it's you or somebody else? What might be the rehab cost, whether the roof, the uh, some of the major things is normally the roof foundation, electricity, plumbing. Those are some of the things that we tend to overlook. And so those things can really take out your profits if you don't account for those things in, in a transaction, right? Um, sure. It's definitely a, a risky business. I always say though, it's a risk. Well, actually, anything you do is risky, but this is an, uh, a more calculated risk because as long as you know your stuff, yeah, it's, right. it's a risk, but it's calculated, you know? Yeah, if you if you have the knowledge and realizing that, like out there in LA, don't they have like a mandatory solar thing going on? Not not yet. They're they're thinking about it. They're talking about it, but it's not it's not necessarily uh, not for uh, older homes. Uh, a lot of the newer homes are asking if they're brand new construction to have something to that. Uh, not necessarily for a house that you buy and you flip right now, right? That but, um, it wouldn't affect you. But on something like that, it's something you need to know and be aware of right. if all of a sudden that right. is factored in. So like yeah. I bought a house in the Western suburbs here in Minneapolis and the guy that sold it to me, he, he didn't really tell me, uh, you know, straight out that uh, one of the, the sewage things froze and it cost mm. him $7,000 to have it fixed. Wow. And then I bought the house and I, it was all enclosed. Yeah. I figured, okay, he enclosed it. That's going to be good, right? Yeah. Well, he didn't <laughs> insulate it. Yeah. So it could have froze again. Luckily, I took it and I put a hole through the basement so some warm air can get in there. Yeah. So it wouldn't yeah. freeze. But, um, you know, that would have been a lot. You know, I don't want to pay $7,000 to have the thing. <laughs> you yeah, got to know yeah. all that stuff. You got to have right. knowledge. Right. I can tell you, I've made so many mistakes. Uh, and, and again, I don't call them mistakes. They're more lessons that I've yeah. learned throughout my career. Um, again, though, it goes back to what we talked about earlier, though, if I would have given up the first time, I probably wouldn't be here uh, in doing real estate. And I've lost thousands of dollars uh, in the real estate uh, market uh, in investing just because that's, I feel like that's part of doing business, right? And again, anything you do, you're always going to lose money. It's not, it's not what you lost there is what you can get in the long term. Well, it's like investing in college. Yeah. Right, yeah. If you're yeah, educated exactly. and you go, I'll never do that again. Yeah. Or, or, or you go to college and you get a degree and then you pay whatever, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 and you get this degree and you don't even work in that industry, right? So that's an investment that kind of went right. sideways. You go get a degree and then you're working as a barista at Starbucks. Yeah. It could yeah. happen. Yes. So you said you have some courses and things you, you coach people through or you got actual courses you can take? I do, I do. So I do uh, uh, primarily two things. I have a uh, a uh, a one on one coaching for people that want to get into real estate investing. Uh, normally, it's about uh, six to eight sessions, give and take. Uh, and uh, what I do is I work with the student until they get the first deal, right? And then I work with them uh, all the way through. We finish our module and then after our our our, our, uh, our classroom setting per, per se. And after that. If by then they have not received, they have not been able to close on their first deal, I will continue to work uh, with them as long as they reach out to me so they can um, get that one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Uh, so that's one thing yeah. that I do. On the other side, I also do the, the mind coaching where I have um, uh, different uh, sessions where people either want to do people clearing, uh, either an, an emotional or a belief clearing. So maybe I'm not worthy enough, right? So then I can tap into that through, uh, again, neuro-linguistic programming and, and look at why do you feel like you're not worthy enough? And then we can tap into the root of the cost of that, of that challenge and work, and work through that. Uh, and then also other things too, where you can, you know, find your purpose and, or find uh, different things uh, within, um, you know, your life. So those are the two things that I offer.
Well, I know there's some things like that because like I mentioned, um, you know, coming from a family and we weren't real wealthy in that family. So I know I've got situations in my head. I'm 63, but that stuff is still there that sometimes you need to have someone kind of shake you up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it, 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 here's the best way that I can give it to you, the best ana analogy, right? It's like um, you have a garden, right? And in that garden, you have weeds that are, you know, coming out. And then you go over with the uh, lawnmower and then you just remove it from the surface, right? So from the surface, you don't see that or you don't see it anymore. And you think you took away the, 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 the problem, except the roots are still there. So within right. time, they're going to come back again. Well, with NLP, we're not just cutting the surface. We're actually getting to the root cause of that and removing the roots. And obviously, that takes um, a couple of different sessions, depending on what it is that you have in your past. And we go back and peel that until we can get rid of those, that root. And so that comes down to, again, it could be people in your, in your life that were influencing you uh, in a negative way. It could be beliefs that you have growing up as a kid. So, again, like you said, even in, in your 50s, you, you might have stuff from when you were in your, ten, in, in your early uh, uh, years, right, zero oh, yeah. to seven, that you've been dragging, but you've never, never really took the root out of that. And so that's what we looked at. Totally. That's what I went through with the breath work and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Cause, yeah. cause it, I used to like use a paper clip to like you to, to like pick away at something you'd, you'd bend it open and use it. Mm. I would bend the paper clip back so I can use it again. Cause you don't want to waste the paper clip. So that's <laughs> yeah. scarcity mindset with something as simple as a paper clip. I, I remember doing that too. Yeah. I can see that. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we all did that. <laughs> well, Caesar, I try and keep these kind of condensed so people can grab yeah. all this information. So um, how do we get a hold of you? In case uh, someone yeah. wants to uh, work with you, I really like what you've got going with the real estate because it is a totally different mindset, and people want to get yep. into it. And the mindset NLP stuff that kind of works together. Right. So yeah, it does. How it do does. we get a hold of you? And do you have a copy of yeah, your book you can show us? Yeah, definitely. I do have a copy. Of, I actually have a couple of them. Uh, I'll show you. Um, this is my. Uh, you can see that. It's not multiple authors, but this is the number one bestseller book that, uh, that just came out uh, maybe about a month and a half ago. Okay. Uh, our friend Trey is actually part of this book. So Trey is there. Uh, this is my other book, You Can Overcome Anything. So all of these books are available at Amazon. Uh, this is how, to, uh, how We Became Entrepreneurs, Follow Our Leads. And then What Is Like Being Entrepreneurs and Dare to Be Authentic. And then I have a Spanish version for those people that are Spanish speaking on okay. this book. Because I got so many great uh, reviews and people really love the English version that I said, you know what, I got to get this in Spanish. So this book is also available in Spanish. Well, you got quite a library right there. I, I do. I do. <laughs> we'll have a couple of more. But yeah, the best way to get a hold of me uh, is either the social media. I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, uh, uh, Facebook under my name, Cesar Espino uh, or Cesar R. Espino. Or you can just go to my website, www.cesarrespino.com. And you got, uh, you're on YouTube too, aren't you? I think I, I think sorry, yeah. And I'm on YouTube too. So Cesar R. Espino. I think my YouTube channel is called You Can Overcome Anything. Oh, you got a, a podcast kind of thing or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very, very cool. Well. I'm a podcast too. I, I know more about you than you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Cesar, I appreciate you taking the time. If you want to stay on, um, uh, we can have a little chat, but I'm going to yeah, close definitely. off the recording and then beam it up to the universe. And Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Peace.